All right, turn to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And look down at uh, verse 6 of Romans chapter 11. And it says there in Romans chapter 11, verse 6, And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And I'm going to pray real quick. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity to preach. Lord, just uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And um, help me speak clearly and boldly. And uh, with courage, like Brother Moses said. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the title of my sermon is, If by Grace, Then Is It No More Works? So keep your finger there. We're going to be in Romans a lot. But turn to Romans chapter 4, just a few pages back. And while you're turning there, I'm going to just read you the definition of grace in a Webster's Dictionary. So grace means unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification or a virtue coming from God or the second um, uh, definition would be approval or favor or mercy or pardon. Something that's freely given to us, unmerited favor towards us. That's what grace is. Something that we don't deserve. So anyway, you're there in Romans chapter 4. We're going to read a bit today. Uh, Romans chapter 4. Look down. We're going to start there. uh, Verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father has pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let's just stop right there. That's clear scripture. Most of the scripture that I'm going to go through today speaks for itself. You know, we should be able to read God's word and it should just speak to us plainly, simply. It's very easy to understand because, you know, I had a few sermons planned for the night, but I decided to change it after me and Adrian uh, ran into the sky on Sunday. And he was just so, uh, just to give an example, you know, he, he agreed with everything I was telling him that it's not of works, but... You know, I'd rather be the guy to not kill someone and and go to heaven than kill someone and go to hell. Well, if you're believing that, then you're trusting your works. You're trusting in yourself to not do something to get you to heaven. That's works. And it just, everything I was telling him was just bouncing off his head. He just did not understand. But let's keep reading. Uh, verse 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the, man, of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. It's over and over again. It's without works. And I'm just going to... Just set it straight now. We know it's not without that it's not with works. We know that. Um, so my sermon is not really like others. There's not really points. They're just one point that our uh, salvation isn't by works, and I'm just going to prove that with plenty of scripture here. Let's keep reading, uh, verse seven, saying, "Blessed are they whose in, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom that the Lord will not impute sin." Cometh, cometh this blessedness and upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned? How, how was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Now look at this next part. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. It's not by works. Abraham was saved before his works, before he was circumcised, before he had... Israel circumcised. He was saved before them. And uh, verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been, uh, which he had yet been uncircumcised. So before he was circumcised, like I just said, he was saved. He already had that righteousness of the faith. But um, the sign of circumcision, circumcision was just a sign of his faith. And that's what our works are for. It's a sign for between us men. So that we could see our faith through our works. But God doesn't need to see that, right? He can see our heart. He he knows what we're about. In verse 12, uh, 
and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Again, he had that faith before he was circumcised. Uh, thir verse 13, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. We get the promise from God, from our faith. Our faith is counted for righteousness. And look at verse 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is made in unaffected. If we're trusting in our works, then our faith means nothing to God. It has to be all by faith. It has to be all through faith in Jesus Christ. Or else, our faith is made void. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's void. Uh, verse 15, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be, a, might be by grace. To the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to, to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. So when we're saved, when we're believing and trusting in Jesus Christ through faith, we're, we're part of Abraham's seed. We're the true Israel. Let's get that straight. Uh, turn to um, Galatians. Galatians. And remember, keep your uh, finger there in Romans because we're going to come back. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, look down at verse 16. Verse 16 in Galatians uh, chapter 2. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It's not by the law that we're saved. It's not by our works it's by our faith in Jesus Christ. Now let's keep reading verse 17. Uh, but, if we, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So, of course, you know, we're not given a license to sin. We should be striving to obey God's law. We should be striving to follow in Christ's commandments and God's commandments. But, of course, we are sinners. There's no way... That we're ever going to get rid of all of our sin. It's just impossible for sinners till the day that we die. Um, uh, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, for I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So if we're trusting in our works, and we had to work our way to heaven, then what was the point of Christ even coming and dying for us? What's the point of even believing him if all we could do is just be a good person to follow the law and be sinless, and, we'll make, and, we, and we could go to heaven? No, we need a Savior because we're sinners. We've sinned since childhood. It's just part of our sinful nature since, since Adam, really. So, anyway, uh, go to Galatians chapter 3. We're just going to keep reading. Verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? So, are we saved through our works, or through faith? Again, this question keeps popping up over and over, and it, gets, keep, it keeps getting answered for us over and over, too. So verse 2, this only what I learn of you, okay, I've just read that. Verse 3, are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Are we perfect by our works? Are we? Uh, verse 4, have you, um, verse 5, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? For, uh, verse 6, even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Since we're saved through faith, we're the true seed of Abraham. We're the real Israelites, the spiritual Israel. Uh, verse 8 in the scripture, uh, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. 
You know, we've been people have been getting saved the same exact way, even in the Old Testament, even in Abraham's day. When God was giving Abraham that promise that all nations would be blessed, he was talking about all of us. He was he knew the future. Of course, because he's God, right? Uh, verse uh, verse ten. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And the Bible says over and over that we're all sinners. So according to this verse, the law is what curses us. The law is what condemns us to hell. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need to believe in Jesus Christ through faith. Uh, verse 11, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And verse 12, And the law is not of faith, but but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Anyway, um, turn to Genesis 6. Since, you know, I want to bring up some, some Old Testament, right? Where do we find grace in the Old Testament? Go to Genesis chapter 6. And while you're turning there, I'm going to read for you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. We, uh, we say this during a soul winning. We tell this to people. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. It's the gift. It's through faith, by his grace. So you're there in Genesis chapter 6. Let me turn there myself. And this is the first time we see the word grace being used in the Bible. Uh, look down at verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. This is when God was about to flood the earth, and he was looking for a righteous person in the earth before he did so. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So even back then, someone found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He believed in the Lord through his faith, not through his works. It was all by faith. That's why the Lord found grace. Uh, found grace in that, uh, or Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because he was a saved man, even at that time. He believed in the true Lord God. And um, turn to Rome. Go back to Romans. Romans 6. And while you're turning there, I'm going to read you another verse from the Old Testament. From Isaiah, chapter 64, uh, verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. All of, our, all of our sins and all of our iniquities, they condemn us. And our righteousness, our works, they're like filthy rags in the eyes of God. They mean nothing without faith. If we don't truly believe wholeheartedly, 100%, in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior to get us to heaven, then our works mean nothing. They're filthy rags. So Romans chapter 6, you're right there. Let me turn there myself. Romans chapter 6. So we're going to read a little bit here again. <clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 6. Look at uh, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So yeah, we shouldn't sin. We should strive not to sin. Um, God forbid. How, how shall we? that are dead to sin, live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we should strive to live like Christ, to be like Christ. We should. Uh, uh, verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Again, we shouldn't serve sin. Uh, verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. So once we're saved, we're born again, the old man dies, we're living in our spirit, we should be living in our spirit. So our spirit is freed from sin, but we're still in the flesh. So we still have that curse of sin 
uh, abiding on us, but not our spirit. Our soul is saved. We are saved. So we are freed from sin. Verse 8, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So now that we're saved, now that we actually believe through faith, death doesn't have dominion over us. We're not going to endure the second death like the Bible says. Uh, verse 10, For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey in the lust thereof. So again, we shouldn't, we, we shouldn't obey the lust of our flesh. We shouldn't give in. But at the end of the day, we are sinners. Everybody's going to tell a lie every now and then, even in the joke. You know, we're all going to uh, bend the knee to sin every now and then because we are sinners. Uh, turn to Second Timothy. Well, actually, stay there. Uh, go, skip down to verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? God forbid. Again, we're saved by faith. It's clear. We're not under the law. We're under grace. But should we still sin? Of course not. Just to get that out of the way. Because a lot of people will, will try to mix, you know, try to twist words and try to twist our doctrine and say, oh, you know, they don't believe they should, we should do any works. We, they believe that everybody could sin or, you know, all that nonsense. No, we shouldn't sin. Of course, that's why we preach hard against sin. But our works isn't what save, saves us. We can still be sinners because the Bible says that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. So while we were still sinners, Christ decided to die for us and to give us a, a Savior. Uh, so you're there in 2 Timothy. Look down at uh, chapter 1, verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now look at this. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. It's through his own purpose. It's through his own grace. And he promised us all this before the world began. It wasn't by works, even before the world began. It never was. It was all by believing in Christ. It was all by believing in the true God. Because what did man do in the beginning? They wanted to whore after other gods, all these false idols. That's why God flooded the earth, because no one believed in the true God. They all were doing their own, their own thing, obeying to their sin in the most terrible way possible. The Bible says that, you know, the people were evil in all ways, you know, but um, go to James 2, you know, I thought we should go to James 2, right, because this is where all the heretics like to go, this is where uh, the guy yesterday that me and a uh, pastor ran into, he wanted to bring up, well, faith without works is dead, right, yeah, you know, we could just read one scripture out of a whole chapter, sure, get your doctrine from that, but no, let's, let's actually get that verse in context, you know, so James 2, we're going to start at verse 14. What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, of course we know that. Faith can't save him. But well, let's keep reading. Uh, skip down to verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So, yeah, you have to have works, right? Right? Well, let's keep reading. Yea, a man may... A man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew, shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So that's, you know, everybody likes to go to that verse to just prove, oh yeah, you need works, right? You need works. Well, let's keep reading. Let's just not stop there. See, that's where the heretics like to stop. That's where all the... Uh, people who want to bow down to this false doctrine of works plus faith is what gets you to heaven. Let's keep reading. That's where they like to stop. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? 
And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. It, he believed God. And righteous was imputed unto him because of that. And he was called the friend of God because of that. Verse 24. Ye see, uh, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. See, a lot of people will try to say, well, this, you know, this is for being saved, right? But no, this is for us, for us talking to one another, for the brethren to see that we really are living by faith, by our works. This is for us to see our faith. God doesn't need to see our works to see our faith. He knows our heart. But for us men, vain men, we have to see each other's works to know that we're saved in some way or another. But let's keep reading. Verse 25, likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? And this last verse, I think, just just nails it down that it's it's not by works that it, it just completely debunks what people want to say that faith without works is dead really means. And look at look, look at verse 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead. Also, I really like that because think about it like this. So, you know, we have flesh, we have spirit, right? So when we're dead, our spirit is descended into heaven and our body is just there. It's a dead body. That's a dead body. It's unprofitable without the spirit, right? So the body is up. So the body is dead without the spirit. It's unprofitable. Same with our faith without works. Our faith can be, it, it still exists, but without works, it's dead. It's dead faith. It still exists. The body when it's dead still exists. It's still a body. Our faith can still exist without works too. It's still faith. And I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, just to get that covered. Now uh, I'm almost done. Turn to Matthew 7. Let's see what Jesus thinks about works, what he said about people coming to him and saying, Lord, Lord. Look at all these works I did. Shouldn't I be led into heaven? Look what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. This is what Jesus said. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Now look what Jesus' response would be. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. Right there, Jesus laying, laying it out. He does not care about our works. He cares about us believing in him. Yeah, we should have works. We should be striving to be a good person. We should be preaching the gospel to people. But is that what we're saved by? Clearly not. The Bible says otherwise. It's by faith through Jesus Christ. Now, um, you know, even after reading all this scripture, it's pretty clear, right? It's pretty plain. It's pretty simple. We're saved by faith through grace, by his grace. But, you know, some people need a visual, you know. So I have this thing right here, this piece of paper. See, it, it says works, right? So reading that verse, what Jesus said, and I will pre profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work in iniquity. This is what Jesus thinks. He crumples it up. And throws it in the trash. That's what our works are. They're filthy rags. They mean nothing. It's all through faith. Now, just closing, I'm going to read Romans 11, uh, verse 6 again. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So if it's by works, then it's not grace anymore. But since it's by grace, then it's not of works. It's simple. So I just wanted to get that out there. Since that's, you know, that's the doctrine that we're facing every single day when we knock doors. Everybody has something to say about works. Oh, I'm a good person. Oh, I, uh, I, I shouldn't go to hell. You know, I go to church, right? Oh, I was baptized when I was four years old. You know? But uh, anyway, I'm going to just pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for allowing me to preach in front of the brethren today. Uh, Lord, I just ask you to... Please uh, fill up Brother Adrian with your Holy Spirit as he comes and preaches the last sermon. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.